with me, but baby, I'm in the streets. Hey, right, Jack. Hey, right, thinking about this pill I took, pillow talking, shorty rents and Dylan Brooks. Can't believe this nigga talking down. My bank account is mag, know you're milli rocking. Hey, widows in my comments talking about some milli bobby. Look, bring them jokes up to the game, we get to really flopping. I send a finger to your mama in some fetish boxes. Open up that shit, it's jaw dropping, really shocking. Hey, I ain't pretty flock, oh bitch, this shit get really rocky. Hey, damn, what? Dirty high, get on in the way. Say, she act in Hollywood, this ain't that late. No way, she a pretty little lie, like she shake. But that's bait, long as she don't lie to me, then it's okay. It's just another late night with my bitch. Just another late night with my bitch. And I hate to even call her as my bitch. Cause I love that hoe, don't even make no sense. Just another late night with my dog. Just another late night with my bitch. And we riding around trying to make sense right? Or whatever color person comes to me It's a boat on Pride and Lane out from the 6th My dog is lucky, ignorant, he's from the bricks Thinking about this Star Cup, he was really walking Let her fuck him while my eyes are sick, we're really popping Demolition game, pop out, yeah, we get it out here hey y'all so today is november 4th it is 3 p.m and i just wanted to give you guys a little update on the vlog or sit down while i'm standing up stand up talk to you guys you know do a little chit chat because i feel like this whole vlog has been just kind of random clips of me showing you guys me and tj maxx burlington or this that and the third and it's like i didn't really get a chance to actually sit down and talk throughout this vlog so i think the last time i talked was we were on the way to lost and found so i was waiting on my uber and y'all uber be playing for real for real because every time i get an uber it's like they get close to my apartment and then they cancel and then uber has to look for another ride and it's just like how annoying and i was like worried because i didn't want to be late to my reservation which mind you um lost and found is literally right up the street so technically i could have just drove there but i didn't want to be you know drinking and driving and plus the uber ride was only like five dollars so it's like you can't really beat that because you're gonna pay that much anyways in valet but yeah i ended up getting to lost and found at like 803 there was like a long line but the line was like you know it was moving or whatever but since i had my reservation i was able to go to like a different part and say hey i had a reservation and they were like really cool and the service was phenomenal the food was really good i didn't really get any like videos and stuff when i was at lost and found but y'all i did have like a really good time and like i said the food was so good and the drinks were good too um i like the hookah the service was really good so i definitely want to go back to lost and found and probably try something else on their menu but I really like their blackened salmon and shrimp with the mac and cheese and greens. Really, really good. Which, that reminds me. Okay, so you guys have seen probably on Twitter or just online in general about like the Keith Lee and the Atlanta restaurant situation. And I did kind of want to touch on that because Keith is not lying. Like that's another thing that I hated about living in Atlanta. It's like if you don't have more than a thousand followers on Instagram or this, that, and the third, it's kind of like people don't treat you like you're a human. And it's like weird as hell. Yeah, he is right about like ATL culture, like restaurant culture, and even just club culture in general. That's why when I made my Atlanta, like how to finesse the club video like two years ago, like I was not joking when I said like you either have to look the part or you have to like know people like party promoters to like get into places because if not like you just gonna it's, it's gonna be a rough night for you let me tell you that much so and that's why I never really did brunch and stuff in Atlanta and whenever I would go to like the m more so like popular places in Atlanta I would only go on the weekdays because I knew on the weekdays it wasn't as busy but you still get good food in this and the third and even on the weekdays when it's slower like the service at some of these places still don't be 
all that great. And it's like Atlanta be charging like an arm and a leg for their food, their services. It's like every time I would go out in Atlanta by myself and order food, it's like I would order food, drinks, hookah, all of that would cost like over a hundred dollars, you guys. Meanwhile, me in Houston, which I know Houston is similar to Atlanta. I mean, people say that, but to me personally, it's still a different vibe because everywhere I go, it's like people are like the service is always like really good. The food is really good. Like honestly, Houston has it when it comes to like the food places because Atlanta, like Atlanta is all into like aesthetic, especially like for Instagram pictures and this, that, and the third. So like I get it. So in Atlanta, they put more emphasis on how the place looks compared to like the food and stuff which i mean to me that kind of defeats the purpose of a restaurant i'm like just do like a selfie museum or something and then another thing too that i remember hating about going out in atlanta was there's this one particular lounge that i did really like going to all the time because the vibes were always good but whenever it would get packed it's like they would always be doing like petty stuff like, I remember one time I had made a reservation there for 8 p.m. And tell me why, like, my friend and I got there at 8 p.m. And the restaurant was talking about how uh, they overbooked for 8 p.m. So they don't have a table for us. And it's just like, how do you overbook a reservation? It's like either it's available or not. But you can't be overbooking because then, to me, it, it just feels like, okay, but you still need to accommodate me. And it's so annoying, too, because half the time at these Atlanta restaurants and bars and stuff, it's like they'll say they won't have a table for you, but then it's like when you, like, look around the corner, you'll see hella tables available. And it's like, okay, just because maybe y'all are short-staffed or this, that, and the third, y'all shouldn't be punishing me. Like, I shouldn't have, like, I made a reservation, like, period. Like, there, I shouldn't have to explain myself. So why do I now have to wait, like, two, three hours? Or, matter of fact, at this place, it's kind of like if you don't have a large party, then you can't get a table or, like, a high booth. So it's like, that's why I do reservations, because if I don't do a reservation, then I'm not going to have nowhere to sit. And it's like... Atlanta, y'all be having some nerve. Like, that's another thing, too. Like, I hate how, like, some of the more popular um, restaurants and stuff in Atlanta, it's like, they're not even, like, restaurants at certain points. Like, they're, like, literally a club, which, if that's the type of vibe you're going for, then that's definitely cool. And it's like, I get it, some restaurants are like that, so I definitely understand. But at a certain point, it's kind of like, all right, can y'all have two separate areas, like a club area and a dining area? Because it doesn't make sense. You have people like, I don't know. It's just, you, you, if you know, you know. Like, you know those type of places where they're advertised as like a restaurant, not like a bar, not like a club. But yet when it gets super packed, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's like, the it's, it's. The thing is, is that the restaurant isn't designed to be a club. Like, it's not meant to have hella people just standing around, but also people sitting down, eating their food, like, normal restaurant style. It's just weird. I don't know. But, yeah, they definitely be overcharging, like, hell. Like, ever since I've been to Texas, like, I feel like I've saved money as far as, like, activities and like groceries this that and the third because they just don't charge as much as like they do in atlanta like i would go to he like um well here i go to heb now but back in atlanta i would go to like whole foods sprouts fresh market which i know those places are expensive but like damn i did not realize how expensive those places are till now i go to heb here in texas and it's like i get so much stuff and my total would be like $50. And it's like, what? Like, this should be like probably like $100 if I was at Whole Foods. <laughs> I also wanted to give you guys a quick update on the couch situation. So I finally found a couch, you guys. So it's so crazy how life happens. So I did go to this one furniture store like maybe two weeks ago at this point, And I found like a white boucle type couch. And it was really nice, but now that I look back at it, it's just like, mm, that probably would not have fit well with, like, 
um my apartment theme because like in my apartment there's nothing that's really like super super white everything's kind of like a neutral color like a sand neutral if anything i mean my walls are white but i mean that's about it like nothing's like white white like my shirt basically so but yeah i was just thinking about i was actually really about to get that couch so you guys that white blue clay couch at first but what stopped me was okay so ever since that easy rent scam thing that happened to like my parents and i i now look up stores and stuff on like the better business bureau because i need to know if you're a good business or like if you're known for scamming when i put in the place that i actually was going to get the furniture from basically it had like a 1.5 star rating so to me that was a red flag like hey don't even don't even bother with um doing business with them which i think i said that in the video previously when i was like about to head to lost and found so fast forward so all week i have been like looking online for like similar material or like a similar style to that like i looked on um cb2 crate and barrel um where, where else this online store called article furniture what's what's the other one road furniture or something like that which i had seen that all of those kind of don't really have like the best reviews so i was kind of like at a certain point i was like you know what let me just go to like rooms to go because actually one of my um family members told me to go to rooms to go here and just check it out so i went to rooms to go on wednesday night and i wasn't really expecting to find anything like i'm not gonna lie but i kept looking kept looking around and i seen this one couch and i was like hmm that couch it looks nice like it looks like i can do a lot with that couch like not only can i do a lot here in this apartment but i can do a lot like if i were to move somewhere else like i feel like that was going to be a versatile couch and then what i liked about it too is that it's not necessarily white white but it's more so like a sand color so and the material isn't boucle it's like it's kind of like regular furniture material i don't know how to describe it you guys <laughs> rooms to go they're having like a veterans day sale so when i seen the price of the couch in store i was like ain't no way like i literally kept looking at the price and i was like let me take a picture of this so i'm like i know i'm not tripping right i it was a three-seater couch for $677. All of the other couches I've seen everywhere else that like were good quality and stuff were like at least over a thousand something dollars. So I didn't expect to get something of good quality from Rooms to Go for that price. Like I thought I'd be paying way, way more. So like I didn't buy it right away when I first saw it. I just wanted to like kind of think on it. So I went back home. I thought about it, slept on the idea of having the couch here, and then I woke up on Thursday and I was like, yeah, I want the couch here. I want that couch. That's a really good deal. And this and the third. And two, I did look up the couch online on Rooms to Go. And so I was looking at some of the reviews and I saw how other people had it um, decorated. And that's what really sparked my I don't know i can actually really envision it in my place so that's when i was like you know what let me go ahead and get it because i'm gonna be kicking myself in the butt if this like gets sold out and i don't see a couch again like as nice as that one for the price because i was even able to sit on it you guys and it felt really nice it sits really deep too and like the pillows are really plush i am gonna go ahead and replace the like display pillows or like the decorative pillows that they had because it's kind of like grandma-ish but the couch itself i am so excited to have it delivered so it's supposed to be delivered today um I'm actually, okay, so it's in transit right now. They're currently at stop number 12, and I'm stop number 13. <laughs> Y'all, like, I am so, it's so crazy how, like, you could get so excited over, like, the little things. Like, I'm at that point in my life where it's, like, I get excited over the little things, like, getting a couch or 
trying out a new dishwasher detergent or something like it it be the little things for me now so yeah i'm really excited to get my couch hopefully delivery goes smooth because i think the service elevator is still down here and i don't know i just want everything to be smooth like all they're doing is just delivering the couch and like keeping it and pushing like they don't have to put the couch together or anything so i'm thinking it should be quick i did order the white glove service so that way i don't have to do anything and then once they deliver my couch i'm gonna go ahead and um I'm gonna go ahead and get some Starbucks and then I may go to at home, which that reminds me of another thing, you guys. So I did wanna give you guys another update. Since moving to Houston, I finally got me an easy tag because y'all, like the traffic here, I mean, to me, it's kind of like the same as Atlanta traffic, but I don't know, Texas traffic is still a little bit different but it's kind of the same but that's neither here nor there but there's a lot of toll roads here and it's like i don't know i want to be able i don't want to be in a situation where i need the easy pass and i don't have it it's like i'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it so it was really easy to just go on like easytaghouston.com signed up put in my vehicle information and preloaded like ten dollars on it like i know it's just 10 but i'll probably load some more on i just wanted to see how everything worked first so at this point i am able to go on toll roads i'm still actually waiting on the tag itself to come in the mail but for right now as a courtesy they like they're gonna charge me like the non-easy tag price Cause it's like my vehicle is still registered in their system so the non-easy tag price i seen is like just five cents more compared to the regular easy tag price so yeah but it will definitely come in handy because i wanted to go to um at home that um furniture decoration store whatever and I remember yesterday I was looking at the traffic and tell me why like without toll roads it would have taken me like 40 minutes to get there but with toll roads it told me it would take only 19 minutes and I'm just like that's worth it especially since my exit is kind of like right where one of the toll roads in so it's very easy for me to like get straight on the toll road and get straight off so I love it so yeah i'm definitely getting used to living in houston you guys i really love it i don't regret moving here at all like i literally don't at all <laughs> also too my skin is starting to get better i think it just needed to get used to the water here and just you know changing environments that's all and i feel like i was making my skin worse by like trying all of these different like facial moisturizers serums and washes like i just needed to stick to what i normally use which is my noxema the noxema anti-blemish pads i use the olay moisturizer which i haven't been able to find the shea butter one but i just use another olay moisturizer a little bit of sweet almond oil and sunscreen which y'all i may have said this in like my last vlog or another vlog about like using oil on your face but i did do some research and i forgot about sweet almond oil how it is hyperallergenic it's not supposed to clog your pores in fact it's like an anti-inflammatory type of oil so it's actually really good for your skin like your face and your actual skin so that's why i've been continuing to mix the almond the sweet almond oil in with like all of my with all of my skincare products matter of fact i went to whole foods yesterday or the day before yesterday and got like the really really big bottle of sweet almond oil because i was like hold on let me yeah i literally went to whole foods the other day and got this sweet almond oil in the 16 fluid ounces size because i was like look i use sweet almond oil for everything i use it for my hair my face my body like this is my holy grail oil so i always use either sweet almond oil or i'll get grape seed oil like for my hair and i'll get it from whole foods because they have like these really big bottles but 
yeah so which yeah that reminded me of a point that i wanted to mention in this vlog about like skincare in general like i feel like the skincare industry as a whole is low-key a scam because y'all i spent so much money on all those different facial products when it was like i didn't even need to do all that i just needed to continue to keep buying what i normally always use and keep it pushing because all of that other sh extra stuff that I bought for my face, it's like, I don't even use it. Like, I may use it every now and then, but it's kind of like, I just feel like I wasted my money. And if I had that TJ Maxx receipt, I would definitely um, return everything. And I did get the LA Posh or LA Roche. Y'all know that... Um, company i'm talking about but i got one of their facial cleansers because people swear by like that company that like their facial stuff like does something for them but for me it just like it don't be given like how the noxzema gives for me and noxzema is only like three or 4.99 like noxzema is so cheap but it like works and there's another thing too that i was thinking of buying it was that snail mucinin like serum thing that everyone's kind of been talking about which i didn't know that's kind of been like a hyped product for like years now like i thought that was like a new product that came out but then i look up the reddit post from like five years ago where people were talking about it so i didn't know that that the snail mucinin was that popular but I was like looking at it and it was like only like $20 or something like that on Amazon for like the big bottle of the serum. And I was like really thinking about getting it, you guys, because I was like, it, it was so cheap. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I don't need nothing. Like, it's like every week the skincare industry is going to come out with a new product that's supposed to be anti-aging. It's supposed to fill all of your pores. It's supposed to brighten your face get rid of dark spots on your bags like there's always going to be a new and improved product that the skincare industry is going to like sell you and it's just kind of like a, at, the, at the end of the day to me like it's all the same shit like i was thinking about buying the youth to the people facial wash and i'm so glad i did it because first of all i didn't like the fact that it was in a glass bottle like i mean glass is cool but glass is so easy to break so that's the one thing that turned me off and then two it was like forty dollars that's the other thing like i've stopped going to like sephora and stuff like that because for, well first of all i don't really make wear makeup like that that's another thing too i feel like the makeup industry in my opinion i mean it's never gonna fall off but for me personally i guess i'm just in that era where it's like i don't really i want to look my best natural self so i am focusing on my skincare but i'm not focusing on buying 10,000 skincare products i just want to buy you know two or three products keep it simple and let's keep it pushing because you just spend thousands and thousands of dollars on like makeup and skincare and it's like i don't know now that you know i'm really taking care of a lot of things now i am more self-conscious about the things that i spend my money on and it's kind of like all right makeup and stuff like i don't even need makeup like i'm over it i'm over the marketing i'm over going to sephora i'm over going to ulta the second and third but don't get me wrong i'm gonna still go to ulta sephora but <laughs> am i gonna be buying stuff probably not like <laughs> like even with um lip if anything, I'll go to Sephora to get my um, Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip. But I'm not gonna lie because Elf, Elf has been, Elf has been keeping up when it comes to the makeup trends, and Elf is like way cheaper. So I may actually try the Elf lip oil. Um, I heard the NYX lip oil is really good too, but I just haven't tried that, but. Oh my God, I've been talking for so long, you guys. But yeah, so let me just go ahead and like kind of close out this section of the vlog. But yeah, so I'm getting ready to have my couch delivered. Like I said, it's now showing that they are at stop number 12. And I, again, I'm stop number 13. It says they're supposed to arrive between 3.35 to like 4.05 p.m. 
and it's 3.32, so hopefully sooner than later, because I am ready to get out the house. Like, I was gonna go to like some stores earlier, but I was like, no, I wanna wait, because like, I just don't wanna be out knowing that at a certain point, I have to come back home, because I have to let people into my apartment. So, that's why I was like, I'ma just wait. And plus two, at first it said they're gonna get here like one something. Now it's like almost four. I'm just like, oh my gosh. But the delivery window does say from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So it's not even like their fault. But yeah, after they deliver the couch, I'm going to go to like at home. I probably won't go to like Home Goods or TJ Maxx anymore because I've already been to like Home Goods and TJ Maxx like a thousand times and I'm just not really seeing exactly what I want. Um, and so I'm gonna go to at home, but y'all, I'm not gonna lie, like, I've definitely been analyzing these prices because there have been a lot of things that I've seen on Amazon that I really want, but I'm like, let me see if I can find it for cheaper at, like, TJ Maxx or, like, Home Goods, like, you know what I'm saying? Marshalls, this, and the third, and it's like, I'll go to those places, and it's like, it's not really cheaper like even the acrylic drawers or like the organizing set that i want it's like you can get 25 pieces on amazon for like um let me see because i saved it you guys so let me let me see real quick okay yeah you can get a 25 piece clear plastic drawer organizer set for $16.19 and they give you a whole bunch of different sizes. It's like, I'd rather pay um, $16 for 25 than pay $3.99 or like $4.99 at TJ Maxx or Home Goods for one, you know? So, and then like the, the uh, vases that I want to like put the, I think it's called like Pamper or Pant, Pamp I don't know. They, you know those like little fluffy flowers that people put in, in vases. Like very aesthetically pleasing the standard third. Yeah, you would think it's easy to find that, which I feel like it is, but maybe I'm just being picky and it's kind of like I already seen what I liked on Amazon and it's like these other stores in person, either they don't have it or if they do, it's kind of like it's not cutting it. So I just feel like... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Amazon is cutting these mom and pop stores for real. Like Amazon definitely has all of the deals and you can get it pretty quickly. Cause I had Prime that may be the move you guys. That may be the move. All right, that's all I have. So peace. Hey y'all, so real quick, I just wanted to give you guys an update on the couch situation. So y'all, I'm not even gonna lie, I was so upset earlier because, so rooms to go, they did arrive finally at my place around like, probably like five minutes after I stopped recording. And the guys were pretty cool. It was like three guys and they were able to, you know, get the couch off the truck. We got to the elevators, you guys, and the couch did not fit in the elevators. So because of that, they couldn't deliver my couch. And like, they really tried like really, really hard. And it sucks because the couch was only like, it, if it was just like an inch shorter, it would have fit in the elevator. Which when I looked at the dimensions online after the fact, I do see that the couch is 97 inches as far as width. And the way they were trying to put the couch in the elevator, I'm pretty sure the elevator is only 96 inches, which is 8 feet. So, yeah, long story short, I didn't get the couch delivered today, you guys. Like, I'm literally so upset. And it's like, I'm kind of, like, annoyed at the same time with my apartment complex because we do have a service elevator and i had called downstairs to see well my first question was is the service elevator bigger than the regular ele elevators and of course they said yes it's like definitely bigger than the normal elevators and it's like well damn that sucks because so here's the thing you guys so the service elevators aren't working in my building and they haven't been working since at least since like the end of september when i first moved in here 
but I didn't have a lot of like big furniture so like moving in was like a breeze like so it didn't really affect me but now it's affecting me and it's like it's November and the service elevator is still out and it's just like it should not take that long to fix the elevator in my opinion I'm like with all this money we be paying for rent and stuff like the service elevator needs to be up because if that was up I could have easily put fit my couch in the service elevator went up to my floor and then my door is definitely big enough for the couch to fit through it would have been perfect for my space and I was just thinking in my head with like how is everybody else moving their furniture like does everybody else just have like tiny ass furniture like what's like I'm not understanding this and so I did call the leasing office again and I asked them that like how, how is everybody else moving their furniture and stuff like I can't be the only one with the problem. And the leasing office person is going to be like, um, nobody has had any issues with the elevators. And I'm just like, okay, but I have an issue and y'all aren't doing anything, so now what? Because it's like, I really got a good deal on that couch that I found from Rooms to Go. And it's like, I don't want to, I really don't want to go through the process of trying to find another couch. And it's going to probably cost way more. Because, like I said, I just got a really good deal at, at Rooms to Go. And that couch was, like, really comfortable. It would have been a perfect fit. So, it's just, like, that really sucks. So, it's, like, I don't really want to go through the process of looking for a couch again. So, and it's, like, I don't want to have to sacrifice. I don't want to have to get, like, a tiny-ass couch because temporarily the service elevator happened to be out the time that I moved into this apartment complex. Like, I know people say life isn't fair, but, like, that's annoying. Like, that's not fair. That's annoying as hell. An elevator should not be out for a damn over a month. And who knows how long the service elevator has been out because, like I said, it was out before I even got here. So, I'm definitely highly annoyed. It is, like, I'm, like, debating on if I should just take that L and just go and look for another couch that's like 96 inches and smaller or if I should really press on the leasing office to like get a um get the service elevator up and going but it's kind of like they need that service elevator up and going because once I um get my couch in I want to get like a platform bed so I know I need the service elevator for that and I mean it's like I feel like I'm wasting money here in a sense you know so I'm wasting money on behalf of my apartment and that's like what's making me mad because it's, it's just like I'd rather waste money on behalf of myself but if, if it's because of somebody else's negligence or this that and the third then it's like that's when it gets annoying because it's like I feel like I should be compensated in some way it's like we pay so much like rent already costs so much and it's just like these apartment complexes have the nerve to be half assed too it's just like you can't have it both ways like if you're gonna be half assed with certain amenities this that and the third then it's kind of like I want compensation because I moved here for certain reasons so I'm not saying that I live in a bad apartment complex like this apartment complex is still really nice like I like the amenities I like the sound of third but it's just it'd be the little things y'all like even um too so I remember when I first moved in and like taking showers and stuff y'all so remember I said I know they got hard water but I don't know if this is like an issue that they can fix necessarily but I think that water filter has been helping for sure but um because I can tell my skin is like less irritated now for real for real so but I remember when I first got here and even now when I would like turn on the water, even like in the kitchen, shower, this, that, and the third, it would always take so long for the water to get hot. And it's just like, here's my thing. I don't want to take a cold shower. Like I want a hot shower. So, and I want it like really piping hot. And at my last apartment or any other apartment or house I've been in, it's like, as soon as you turn the water on hot, 
like older places it may take like just a second more but it's like usually you get hot water within like i would say five to ten seconds right tell me why in my apartment complex now it's like it takes 10 like 10 minutes to, for the water to get hot like it's crazy usually i'll go into the kitchen and like finish doing dishes or this on the third so it takes like a good 10 minutes and then after that that's when i'll go ahead and hop in the shower and even after that it's like sometimes my shower would still be like not as hot as it should be like my last apartment complex I mean, it wasn't like no high-rise building like this, but it was still a nice apartment complex. And the water got hot quick. It got quick and it got really hot. So like this place, the water just be mid and it's just like, what's going on? So tell me why I was going to make a complaint, but then I um, got an Amazon package the other day. It was just my matcha lattes. I wanted to re-up on that. And I seen that there was a note on my door in the screenshot of like the picture of the Amazon delivery. And I was like, oh my God, like I was scared. I was like, am I in trouble for something? Like, have I been being too loud or something like stomping? But not. Nah, basically the note was saying that they evaluated our living experience. And it turns out there's like a problem with like, there's a problem with the water heater so they're gonna fix the water heating issue which i was like good so that means i'm gonna have like hot water like really fast and stuff by the time the issue is over i'm assuming right so y'all they said in the note from monday through wednesday they're turning off the hot water so all we have is like cold water to use in the apartment complex and i'm just like it's, it's going to take like two, three days to fix this hot water issue. Like, what are y'all doing? And it's like, <sighs> by Thursday, when I run the water on hot, it better be so hot. Like, it's boiling hot. Because, what? And I was like, we better get some compensation for this, right? So, I read further on the letter, and it did say they're going to, um... They're not going to charge us for like a water bill or this and the third for this month. And I was like, okay, cool. And they're going to give us like a monetary credit to our account as well. So I was like, okay, cool. Like at least we're getting something for this. So I feel like with this um, elevator experience, I feel like I should get some type of compensation or at least just let me know when it's going to be back in service so I can schedule or reschedule the delivery for the couch at a later date. Like, I'd rather that than me have to go out and find another couch because I just really don't feel like doing that because it's like, I already did that. So, I don't know, y'all. But yes, you guys. So, after that whole fiasco, I went to Starbucks and then came back home i didn't really feel like driving anywhere but i did want to order some food so i am uh door dashing um lotus seafood they have really good seafood you guys i will say i don't really care for their fried catfish and fried shrimp the fried shrimp was like okay but the fried catfish i was like i've had better fried catfish but like their seafood boil, their rice, their wings, everything else basically on the menu is so freaking good. So if you're in Houston and you've never had Lotus seafood, then you're definitely missing out. You definitely need to go to Lotus seafood. I do want to try their drinks too because I see they have like drinks. But I can't ever tell if those frozen drinks are actually like... Um, and drinks with alcohol in it or is it just like regular drinks so but yeah that is pretty much it for this update you guys i know very disappointing very uh but i guess i'll let you guys know what the leasing office says like probably on monday um yeah we're gonna figure out something but all right you guys i'll see you guys in the next update.
Hey y'all, so it is Sunday, November 5th, and I am back from HEB Plus. So yes, your girl went grocery shopping, so I do want to show you guys everything that I got. Because I feel like I got a lot of stuff, and my total was like only $80, something around that. Oh, and too, okay, so y'all, my dad, this was like literally Christmas last year, so Christmas 2022, he got me a new set of pot and pans, and I never got a chance to open them until like literally just now, because I didn't open them back in, um, when I got it on Christmas because well okay so I remember my dad put like the pots and pans in my car for me when I was like home but then once I drove back to Atlanta it was like I couldn't get the box out of my car and I don't know why I didn't think to just you know take the pots out one by one like out of my car and just put it in my um little cart thing that I have so I literally just thought of that today and I was like I could have been had these pots and pans like in use but hey I, I do I do remember at one point I was like well here I know I'm finna move so I'm not even finna like um waste my time like unpacking these pans when I can just unpack it once I move so that was like my um that was my train of thought at a certain point but yeah let me show you guys like everything that I got like Look at all that. <laughs> Look at all that stuff. All of these pots and pans. And y'all, these little wagon things are like definitely necessary. So let me get the pots and pans out, out first. Don't know. Don't know. Uh. Metro. Yo Metro I feel like I'm with a lesbian Can't knock on your door, baby, let me in I should have learned my lesson then I didn't want to keep going, I was hesitant I try to ignore all the evidence But I'm gonna trust myself, ain't no better than Why they roll it too tall like the president And it ain't been no back and forth ever since Yeah, took the bitch on the chip, now she feeling me Us out of frame, I'm Philippine No kissing, no stain, no pressure clean Ass out the chain, we hella beat Why they water like rain on that G-Star beat I kept a ball with no evidence. I pay my dues up like every single day. And since I'm fresh as a peppermint, riches they come ain't no better man. All right, you go like a treasure chest. All right, you go like a leprechaun. I got a stick with a magazine. Young nigga fly as a pelican. I treat my ball like they want to one. Y'all, I'm so ready for the music people to get on to the chopped and screwed non-copyright versions of the Brent Baez, like his new album, because I really like it. But anyways, you guys, so let's go ahead and get into this little grocery haul. Yes, you guys. I just want to show you guys what I bought, because why not? So the first thing that I got was some Texas toast from H-E-B because I was thinking I can use this not only to make French toast in the morning but also um also to make like pizza in my air fryer I was thinking that would be a good snack then I also got some brown eggs organic eggs I always get organic eggs then, of course, I had to get the pizza sauce. I just got the H-E-B brand. So, I really like the H-E-B, um, like, their brand and, like, the products that they have. Like, it's pretty fresh. Then, I got some baking powder for when I want to air fry my chicken wings. So, I feel like the baking powder makes it, it gives the chicken wings, like, a fried chicken wing type flavor without actually frying it. Then, I got some all-purpose flour because we all need flour. Then I got some jasmine rice because I like to make that with some shrimp. 
usually I do like a stir fry or whatever. And I already have some like frozen shrimp in my refrigerator. So yeah. Then I also got the no yolk um, egg white pasta. That stuff is pretty good. Oh my God, y'all, I forgot to get some kabuchas. I'm so mad. <laughs> And then I got the um, salmon portions, the center cut, I guess. So twenty dollars for both or for all of this, which I feel like that's a pretty good deal. So, and yes, I like the skin on my salmon. Then I got some black seedless grapes because I do want to start juicing again. So I did put together my juicer. And I had looked up a juicing recipe and one required like grapes. Well, actually, so I'm going to make my own recipe. So I was thinking seedless. So I was thinking black seedless grapes, honey crisp apples, and some lemons. I feel like that would be very refreshing. So, yeah. I also got some mozzarella cheese for the pizza. I got um, baby arugula for a salad, like a shrimp type salad that's what i was thinking about um making for like a lunch y'all i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about but i've just seen a lot of like recipes on pinterest where like baby arugula is like required and i've seen this one recipe it may have been like a cob salad where like people they like boil eggs have bacon bits the baby arugula and shrimp in their salad Oh, I also got some sweet tomatoes to put in the salad, too. So, I feel like that'll be really good. Then, I also got some pepperoni for my pizza. Y'all, I got a lot of stuff. Okay, so like I said, I got some lemons to juice. Then, I got the honey crisp apples to juice as well. Which, they didn't really have a good selection of apples, you guys. At least not the honey crisp. I was like, no. And then for me, I just got two packets of the chicken wing portions because I really like the wings. I'm a flat girly, so yeah. So I got two packs of that, and it's a pretty reasonable price in my opinion. Both of these packs were like five to six dollars. And then I got the HEB, their chicken breast tenders. Because I've seen so many recipes of people, I don't know, just making chicken tenders like look really good. So, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much all the groceries that I have today, you guys. And y'all, all of these groceries, like I said, were only, all of this was only like $88. So, I feel like that's not bad at all. Okay, so yes, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and put all of these groceries away. Um, leave out the stuff that I'm going to juice. And yeah, I'll go ahead and film myself juicing these items because one, I've never filmed myself juicing anything and two, I feel like it'll be interesting to watch. I really hope it turns out good, but I feel like it will. Um, regardless, it'll be refreshing, so that's the point. Um, as far as like, I did want to mention, so I did pull out some old pots I'm going to go ahead and just throw away since now I have new pots. I'm so happy that I got a new pot set. So thank you, mom and dad, for my pots and pans. And I can tell they got it from Sam's Club. And it's pretty good quality. So, but I'm going to make sure with these pots and pans not to put them in the dishwasher. I'm going to just, you know, hand wash them only and keep it pushing. But, yeah. Update on the couch. So, like, I slept on it. And y'all, I'm still kind of irritated. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I don't even feel like going out to look for another couch. So, I am going to email somebody so we can get to the bottom of this. Like, if anything, I'm not saying, like, y'all need to have the elevator working right now. But it's like, at least give me a date, like, within two to three weeks or something like that. Because if it's, like, within two to three weeks, then it's like, okay, I can wait two to three weeks and then have my couch delivered again. I like, I'll just reschedule the delivery and that's cool. But it's like, I just don't feel like a service elevator should be out because 
And it's like, I'm not thinking about just me. I'm also thinking about other people who have used the, the service elevator in the past to move in. And what if they have to move out now? And it's like, what if their furniture can't fit in the regular elevators? It's like, what is my apartment complex going to do now? Like, I'll be damned if I am trying to move out to another apartment complex and the apartment that I'm at right now, their service elevator is down. And because of that, I can't get my furniture out of this apartment to move it to the new apartment. I would be so mad because it's like, I'm not going to buy new furniture. Y'all need to fix this issue or compensate me or something. But y'all got to do something. So it's like, with this service elevator situation, I don't want y'all to think that I'm being selfish. It's just... Y'all, shit needs to be working. Like, we be paying too much for, like, in rent for stuff to, like, not work. So, yeah. But anyways... process was I forgot like people strain like that last little bit which honestly I can still do that right now but I don't really feel like it so ah. <laughs> look at how cute it is hold on I gotta take a picture of this because this is so cute okay so I got a really good picture for my thumbnail so let's go ahead and try it 
I'm scared. Mmm. Y'all? Y'all? <laughs> I might have done something. Oh my god, that actually tastes really freaking good. Like, this tastes like what people would buy out of the grocery store, like already pre made. That's crazy. I actually really like it. Mm mm mm. And. Oop. Almost dropped it. I'm going to take my vitamin D with it. So. Y'all, that juice is so freaking good. What the heck? Y'all, I'm going to put the juice in this bottle since it's like airtight because I don't want it to go to waste because it's so good. So, let me go ahead and pour it in right now. Oh my gosh. It literally couldn't even fit this whole bottle. I have like one more bottle though. It's actually these blender bottles. But yes. <laughs> I did want to make enough juice so that it lasted me at least a good, I mean, at least two days. Damn, I made a lot of juice because it, it done went up the edge too. That was definitely worth the time and effort that it took to make that juice because it will last me for at least, I would say, three to four days honestly so i don't really drink that much juice so and i think what a lot of people do to preserve the juice is they'll freeze it so i think i'm gonna put these in the freezer okay so i did a google research and it said preserving fresh juice in the freezer will allow you to store it for longer plus relatively few nutrients are lost so yeah i'm probably going to keep this little one out but I'm gonna put this big one in the freezer. But in the meantime, I am gonna go on Google, or no, not Google, but Amazon, and look up some like more aesthetically pleasing bottles, like glass bottles to keep the juice in. So, yeah. Oh my God, y'all, that was so worth it. Like, I'm literally pleasantly surprised with the results of juicing. So I juice seedless black grapes, lemons and honey apple um honey crisp apples that's a really good combination you guys a very very good combination y'all it's so freaking refreshing like i cannot get over how good this juice is like oh my god so there's this one youtuber her, her name is um lip balm kisses tv or morgan and she juices like all the time so i watch her vlogs all the time and really i get a lot of inspiration from her vlogs like she is one person i get inspiration from and she inspired me to get more into juicing so morgan if you see this thank you so much for the inspiration <laughs> i feel corny but no i really love watching her vlogs so if you haven't watched any of her vlogs definitely check out her channel again it's lip balm kisses tv she has like way more subscribers than me but it doesn't matter like we're both in the YouTube community, so, anywho, but yes, anyways, you guys, that's all I have for this update, so I will catch you guys in the next update.